Welcome back, everyone. T.A. Barron here. Thanks for coming back to my writing room for another chapter of my book, Tree Girl. Now, we're at a place where something important just might be about to happen. So let's delay no longer. Chapter 15. Still swaying in her dreams, Anna woke up. She lay on the bed of moss beneath the rowan. The tree's branches and bark looked normal, no sign that anything unusual had happened. Oh, but she knew better. Twigs and cones jabbed at her back and crushed berries stuck to her hair. She bent her legs, so sore, and yet she could only smile. What a night she had known. Stiffly, she sat up and rubbed the bottoms of her feet. Black they were, black as charcoal, and splotched with sap. She pulled a sprig of fern from between her toes, which tickled. Anna gazed at the sun-shafted woods all around her. Leaves, bark, and broken branches lay everywhere, as if a powerful wind had shaken the forest. But she knew well that this had been caused by something much stronger than wind. High Hallow Eve. And she herself had been there. So had Sash, though she couldn't see him anywhere now. She thought of their flying dance, legs kicking high, and her smile broadened. And I will dance with him again, I will, she told herself. She turned toward the higher ground up the slope. But first, the high willow. I'm going there now, at last. She jumped up despite her sore thighs and calves. Then, like a squirrel, she scampered up the rowan and peered through the branches toward the ridge. There it was, rising steeply and closer than ever. And there, at the very top, stood the shape she knew so well. The willow seemed to wave in the wind, beckoning. But wait, she spied something else, something she hadn't seen before. A cliff, sheer and streaked with water, wrapped around the crest of the ridge and blocked her way. Anna stroked her chin. She could go around it, sure, but that would take time, too much time. No, the fastest way to the willow would be to go straight up that cliff. Down the rowan she scurried. Just as she started off, she heard a squawk from the moss at her feet. Eagle! She stooped and stroked his feathered head lovingly. Flying fish eggs, how could I forget you? All that dancing must have rattled my brains. The bird just tilted his head and glared at her. But now we go, she said, half singing. To the top of the ridge. Oh, what a sight that tree must have been in the wild wind. Now come up here on my shoulder. Off she tramped, up the slope, her feet crunching on chips of bark and twigs. Golden rays drifted through the trees and made pools of shining light on the ground. Bluebells and rose hips quivered in the breeze. Bees hummed above the sweet-smelling grasses. The forest felt so different today more friendly, at peace. She pushed the hair back from her forehead and wondered which had really changed, the forest or herself. Her steps quickened. What would she find up there? The tree, of course, but what else? She tried to swallow, though her throat felt drier than driftwood. She had to find something, even something very small, to help her know her own past, her own self. She pushed through some leafy vines that dangled from a hemlock and stepped over a mesh of fallen trunks. Meanwhile, the land grew steadily steeper and dotted with dark boulders, probably broken chunks of the cliff. Then a shadow ahead, the cliff itself. She approached and stood beneath it, hands on her hips, Crab claws. It looked awfully sheer and taller than she thought. 
Water trickled out of the cracks and flowed down the face, making the rock shiny, and she knew without question, slippery, very slippery. Looks tough, Eagle. The sparrow made a fierce, sharp whistle. Of course I'll be careful, you silly. She strode over to a deep crack that snaked its way up from the base. Grabbing the edges with her fingers, she pulled herself off the ground. Then she wedged her toes into the crack and crept higher. Little by little, she climbed. Sometimes she clung mostly to the rock itself, sometimes to the tufts of moss that sprouted from the watery seams, and sometimes, it seemed, to the very air. As she neared the top of the cliff, the long crack came to a sudden end. What now? She leaned out as far as she dared and scanned the face. There, a thin ledge just to her right, but could she reach it? She stretched out her hand, farther and farther. No, just out of reach. Anna shook a drop of sweat off her nose. If her hand wouldn't reach it, then how about her foot? Clinging tight now with both hands, she lifted one leg and caught the ledge with her big toe. She wrapped around the outcropping, braced herself, and the lip of rock broke off. She almost fell, but her hands dug deep into their holds and didn't slip. And she listened, heart pounding, as the broken pieces of rock clattered down the cliff. She studied herself, despite her sore fingers, and drew an uneven breath. Then, swinging her leg outward again, she caught the ledge at a lower spot. Hold tight, eagle. Cautiously, she shifted her weight over to the ledge. Her hands searched for new holes as she slid herself across the rocky face. Cold, damp rock scraped against her elbows and knees. The muscles in her thighs ached terribly. Made it! Eagle drummed her shoulder with his foot. She tilted her head and nuzzled him. The ledge angled upward, and she moved along it briskly. A few moments later, she pulled herself over a gap at the cliff's edge and stood safely on top. She turned to face the slope above them, densely packed with brambles and trees. She couldn't see the willow, but she knew it couldn't be far away. Scratching Eagle's neck feathers, she said, Almost there, my friend. Not far up the slope, they met a thick stand of hawthorns, so thick their branches blocked out the sky. Just the same, Anna plunged right in. The wind stirred and the tree's spicy scent washed over her. To her surprise, the branches seemed to, to part, their spiky edges swinging away and guiding her through the thicket. Suddenly, she burst out of the branches. Bright sunlight made her squint, but after her eyes adjusted, they opened wider than ever, for there, before her, stood the high willow. Anna caught her breath by the sea and stars. All alone stood the tree, boughs arching high into the air, and from those limbs hung leaves in long, flowing tresses, a cascade of curtains that nearly touched the ground. The silver-green leaves rippled and swayed with the slightest breeze. <sighs> For a long moment, she just stood there, gazing up at the tree. Her heart thundered in her chest, and a strange new feeling of warmth flowed through her entire body. Her eyes grew misty. She blinked at them clear, but more mist came. In a hoarse voice, she spoke to the tree her moist cheeks shining in the sun. Great Willow, I am Anna. She took a small step closer to the rippling leaves. The tree's long tresses swayed ever so slightly. They made a soft, rustling sound, a sound that soothed and welcomed, a sound that Anna felt sure she had heard before, although she wasn't certain. Another step closer. I, well, I'm not really sure why I've come to you, just that I had to, and that, she cleared her throat, I want to find my mother, 
Or what happened to her? She was here once, wasn't she? Her face lowered and she whispered, I just want to know her. A gentle gust stirred the layers of leaves. They seemed to beckon to call her closer. Anna stepped among the roots. They felt warm under her feet and bent ever so slightly with her weight, welcoming her. Slowly she pushed past the leaves. Now she saw the tree's mighty trunk, aye, so thick it could have been five trunks bound together as one. Sunlight shone on its bark and shimmered. She reached for a branch above her head, sturdy and strong it felt, and just the right height. She smiled to herself, time to climb this tree. She swung herself up with ease. Whatever else she'd come for, she wasn't about to miss her chance to climb the highest tree of all. But for some reason, she paused and went no higher. There was something that held her back, something she couldn't name. She sat herself on that bottom branch, shrouded by curtains of green, and she leaned back against the trunk. I'm here now, she thought. Really here. Just at that moment, the wind blew stronger, sweeping through the curtains of leaves. They rustled and billowed outward. The whole tree seemed to draw its own deep breath. Anna closed her eyes. She felt the willow sway around her, rocking her as she must have been rocked so long ago in her mother's arms. These branches held her so gently, so completely. She nestled closer to the tree. Then she heard in the rustling boughs a slow, quiet whisper. Hara la washawali, lo hara la washalo lai. Su la sho la shlo heshlana shlana sho. To Anna, the tree's whispery sound was almost, almost like a song. And then she remembered her very own words, a song that blew like the wind and beat like a Rowana, there you be. Master Melwin's harsh voice turned her blood to ice. Before she could move, he grabbed her by the leg and yanked her down from the branch. With a thud, she hit the ground. She stared up at his face, twisted by rage and fear. Blast, girl, I just knew I'd find you here. Now come. He grabbed hold of her arm. Roughly, he dragged her away from the tree, back down toward the forest. A shrieking wind struck the ridge. The willow shook wildly. Its tresses snapped like whips. Other trees nearby began to writhe and twist, slashing the air with their branches. Meanwhile, Anna struggled to break free, but the old man's grip only tightened. No, she cried. She beat her fists against his arm and shoulder. Let me go. His eyes seemed to sizzle. Hush, you foolish child. Brutally, he hauled her along. When they came to the top of the cliff, he veered and dragged her all the way around its side. Then they plunged again down the slope. Eagle tried to cling to her shoulder, but finally tumbled off and landed in a red currant bush. Anna continued to struggle and shout. When finally she fell to her knees so he couldn't drag her so easily, he whipped off his belt and tied her arms together with a fisherman's knot. Then, shaking his head, he threw her over his shoulder, much as he would a net full of mackerel. He stumbled ahead, back toward the shore. By now, the entire forest was roaring in fury. Trees groaned and smacked their limbs together, showering the old man with leaves, twigs, cones, and other debris. Some branches clawed at his tunic, while others tore loose and slammed to the ground just in front of him. Ghoulish faces appeared in the trunks and burls, glaring angrily. But Master Melwin just wouldn't stop. I'll not be losing you now, he panted over and over. Not now, nor ever. <laughs>